Why is ACU constantly called a cheater? I've analyzed over a hundred hours of ACU videos, and today I'm gonna share what I've learned with you. Also, make sure that you stay till the very end of the video where I will reveal his number one secret to beating full squads. But first, big thanks to Outplayed for sponsoring this video. Don't you wish you could capture every kill, win, or even death? Outplayed automatically records in the background and makes clips of, well, what do you tell it to? Whatever you choose will show up on the timeline for your convenience, allowing you to look back and decide what you want to do with the highlights that you've decided on, including exporting small clips or even full games to YouTube. Whether you want to trim a clip and send it to the group chat or review your own dev to see what you could do better, Outplayed's got you covered. Outplayed supports over 300 games and the list just keeps getting bigger. Check out the link in the description and download Outplayed for free today. So back at it again, you guys know me. We did one of these recently for Timmy, but I was thinking we're gonna take a look at ACU as well. I think that ACU is such an interesting case study of, uh, he has a lot of adaptability, he comes from Counter-Strike initially, and you can, like, once you really dive into what he does, and you watch the way he moves, you watch the way he aims, the decisions he makes, uh, down to a micro level, you will start seeing a lot of traces of Counter-Strike. Actually, something you've seen a lot is, now that he's played a little bit of Overwatch, you start seeing some traces of Overwatch as well. Uh, he brings in things, the best habits from those games into his playstyle. I would imagine it's probably uh, subconscious. I don't think it's an active thought. I'm gonna do this and that. I'm to a certain degree, maybe, but at least that's my guess, my educated guess, as we've been watching a lot of these videos, trying to learn from them. Obviously, Counter Strike doesn't have movement. There's a lot of the movement here, obviously, when he is jumping around and doing cool things. He has learned a lot of uh, movement techniques and unlike a few of the other streamers we watch, I do feel like he stays a little bit more up to date with the techniques. Uh, we see him using we see him using a lot of uh, super glides. You have obviously wall hops, you have zipline jumps or whatever, but super glides is kind of like a newer movement. And we see a lot of uh, fatigue. I've actually seen a few fatigue jumps out of him as well. Uh, it seems to be pretty rare, it's not his main uh, poison, but it does happen occasionally. So he de definitely seems to stay on top of that. He always seems to try to improve himself, uh, himself and be as good as he can be. So obviously we're not going to see too much of the Counter-Strike playstyle now that we're watching him popping off on uh, construction here. This is his favorite place to be. Um, I'm like 90% sure that the free videos we've got watching today, yes, it's free videos. Um, he's doing all of that. <laughs> Uh, he's just playing on the constructor side almost every time, I'm pretty sure. But it's fine, it's still really cool to see. This actually breaks uh, one rule he generally does, he's probably feeling good about him himself. Uh, feeling good about himself right now. Uh, but one thing I've noticed ACU does a lot is, so one thing he does right here, is he tries to turn every fight into 1v1, that's for starters. Uh, he also loves to turn, like, work cover, like he plays very close to cover, Tries not to expose himself, keeps like a third of the screen or a third of his body behind cover so he can take as little damage as possible. He is most certainly, out of all the players who watch, especially the pub stompers, that are like the most allergic to taking damage. It's There's almost a massive contrast if you take a look at uh, Timmy, who we watched last week, who has a bit of a... like. He's a, I said it like last week, he has a bit of a bipolar, like either he's super confident or he's super conservative. Um, but I feel like ACU is just always on that conservative crawl. He loves to play cover and take as little damage as possible. And he very rarely dies as a result. Uh, he very usually, he knows his limits and he just tries to like, again, stay in cover, take as little damage as possible, which makes sense if you come from something like Counter-Strike, because as you might know, Damaging Counter-Strike is permanent. If you get shot, you, you can't heal up. You can't get a new armor. You can't hot swap. It's all permanent. So you have to be very conscious of how you're positioned when it comes to map geometry, when it comes to your, your angles and whatnot. And he jiggle peeks a lot, which is also a uh, technique from Counter-Strike. And he loves using the wingman, presumably, because, I mean, I guess the aim is pretty close to the aim you would do in Counter-Strike. Um, now, I know the Deagle is a bit of a special case. Uh, obviously, you don't use the Deagle every day, but it does... I, yeah, I'd, I'd probably drop parallel there. Maybe like a USP, I'd probably say. So, uh, what he's doing now is he's trying to eliminate the one view, like, the fight there. There's two of them, and that's, that's what's so good about ziplines for these movement streamers, right? 
you can bounce around on the zip line and even though two people are right next to each other they can't chase you even if they have like the same movement like they, they are bound to make a mistake to slip up no matter how coordinated they are and eventually they will expose themselves one at a time like loba right there uh this is also trio solos i think all of these are trio uh solos into trios it's really interesting to see but let you just as we're doing this continue like i'll try to point it out but just continue looking at the way he separates one person from his team he does it, it he finds ways to do it all the time um i think out of all the players he's definitely extremely like versatile i feel like i'm gassing up ac i don't i don't know if he needs me to gas him up everyone knows he's great but he's extremely versatile like in his decision making and i just want to bring attention to that um some people are very rigid in the way they play. They kind of just use the same playstyle. You know, they, they do the same kick a thousand times. But uh, he's done every single kick at least one time or many times. And he can really make things up on the fly and make a play work. So now he's trying to play that headshot angle again. Just trying to eliminate how much damage he can take. He knows these things. He needs them to force him out of cover. Hits a good shot. It's very... Ooh, no audio at all. And it's like no... It's just very uh, textbook, extremely textbook. It's very nice to see. Like, he's been doing this for a long time, so you would imagine he's in the type of lobby where things are getting real sweaty. There's three squads alive, and one squad is just trying really hard. He, and here's the here's a key difference I think between someone like Timmy and Aceu. I think Timmy would just run straight in here. I drawed a parallel because we did it uh, last week. Like, Timmy would run straight in there, but ACU is really, he's moving up, he's working with the space, he's trying to get a 1v1, uh, get some damage, some entry damage in, some free poke, to really force them to make a mistake that he can capitalize on. It appears that they killed, um, <laughs> they killed the, the, the third party when the cameras weren't rolling, so there's, a, I assume, a full team underneath there. Yeah, so a full team underneath there. And he's just constantly waiting for him to make a mistake. He also knows he has the advantage here. I'm sure he took the house because he knew the ending to a certain degree. He's been studying the, <laughs> the no-pull zones from ALGS. He knows exactly what to do here. He just has to hold the high ground. And again, he's just constantly... Like, he, he's doing something I like to say a lot. He leads the horse to the water so that the horse then can drown himself. And I just think that's true. That's exactly what he's doing. And the second the horse gets a little bit too close to the water, you know, the bubbles start coming up. He presses his hand down. He keeps him down. He punishes that mistake. And then he gets the kill. Also, one thing I really like about Ace again, he has a very refined uh, play, like play style. Like everything about it, what he does is just so refined. And obviously, his recoil control is. No difference. Uh, so now the R31 is easy to control, but he has very solid R31 control. Um, I guess to a certain degree, obviously there's recalls moving and there's jitter aiming. I don't think you can really jitter if you're one. But I think mo mostly it's just memorizing. Again, he comes from Counter-Strike and Counter-Strike you gotta memorize. Like you wanna aim the M4A1, you wanna aim the uh, AK. You need to know the spray, the spray pattern. And uh, I guess the R31 is pretty close to I, I, I'm gonna get this wrong, aren't I? I think it's like the M4A1. A I might be wrong. <laughs> just hits those beams. And he's just sitting here. He doesn't run into them. Uh, he doesn't. He might feel like he wants to, but he doesn't run into them. He's just constantly working those angles. Now he's using the horizon lift. When he plays horizon, he does this a lot. He kind of uses the lift and always tries to find angles. That's just something he does in general, I guess. He wants to find off angles. And again, with how flexible his decision making is, Obviously, he can figure out other ways to, to find angles. Oh, well, Horizon Q up here. Oh, I'll take the pad and do this or that. This is a lot of that, which I'll really like to see. It's a, it's a treat, if you may. That blood on is something interesting. I don't know what's up with that. I hope we'll get a little bit closer. I want you to see his mid-fight movement because he's he doesn't take a lot of damage. It's something I've noticed. ACU, he deals a lot of damage. He's very clean aim, uh, again, the spray control and whatnot, but he doesn't take a lot of damage. And why is that? Why is Aceu taking so little damage? This might be a perfect example. So obviously he's very close to the cover, but look how much he was moving. In that fight alone, he must have done like four things per second, I guess. Like, look how he goes out, he drops back in, he shoots a little bit, 
He target switches because it still has the mag of the car. He's feeling it. It didn't take damage. And then he instantly, when he swaps, because then he can't shoot, he darts back behind cover. Again, he always plays close to cover. It's a Counter-Strike thing mostly. Or just, I guess, shooters, but Counter-Strike. And then it, when he knows he can shoot back, he takes his car. Like in this specific situation, he knew he caught him off guard. He knew he could press the issue. Uh, if there was a full team of people that were full, he probably wouldn't re-peek the way he did there. But he constantly darted in and out of cover, really not letting them shoot him for longer than he shot them. He also tried to limit his angles, so only one of them could see him at a time. I'm hoping to see more fights in the open. Okay, I guess this is, this is a good example. Look how the hell he's moving. He goes left and right, back and forth. He does like uh, diagonal strafes. He tosses in a crouch in there. Uh, very sporadic as well. You can sort of tell there's a pattern to it, but it feels sporadic. He doesn't let the enemy uh, get a read. He doesn't just go left, right, left, right, forward, forward. Like, you know, like, he, it's no long strafes. He's constantly switching up the way he moves, not to give the enemy uh, an easy beam. Because the second... I do the same thing. Like, you can really tell from experience that... If you're dueling someone and start getting shots in, and you continue moving the same way, they'll just kill you because they've figured you out. So the second he gets a shot in, or the enemy gets a shot in on him, he switches up the pattern a little bit. Never let them know your next move. Alright, let's see what it does. The Horizon can't ult because of the uh, Watts and all. Never mind. <laughs> Oh, that's like... I think he was probably expecting the same thing. He should have gotten eaten there, but I... Ooh, the super glide, let's go! And the trick shot! Oh, that's nice. That was a nice one. Very good punish. If you get that easy entry damage at the start, you can really press the issue here. So that's nice to see. A lot of it. He instantly presses that issue. Yeah, he's cracked, but he's just moving up. Try to cover ground. Tries to cover the ground. Tries to deny the enemy from uh, getting the revive off by just being present. Gets the finish off. If he hadn't gotten damage on the dude on top of the donut, he would not be able to do that. Now he's sort of in the late game. And now again, he's setting this up. He was kind of like setting it up so, okay, they might rush down this corridor. I'm ready to kind of shoot him back if they do. Switches up his angle. Never, you know, always keep him on their toes. Never let them know your next move. Constantly switches up what he does so they can't get an idea. Now, these car beams are just something to die for, man. I started picking up recently. It's such a good gun. Definitely underrated as hell. Uh, I don't think it's gonna stay... Um, I feel like it's gonna get nerfed at this rate. It's, it's a bit difficult to control the recoil, but once you get a hold of it, it's nuts. It is so good. Oh god, this is so awkward. So he's sort of in between two teams and he even called it out. They're calling it awkward. He's in between two and team teams. I can't sp I, I give up. I can't speak today. He's in between two teams. He f sees a 1v1, throws the ultimate out outside of cover, so it sucks the enemy out of cover. The enemy was forced to trade. I'm gonna shoot AC. I'm gonna shoot the ultimate. He shoots the ultimate because he has to, otherwise he dies for free. This guy reses for no reason. AC pushes the issue here and gets uh, the two kills for free. Now the third one is probably not too far away unless I, that was the guy all the way to the left. Kill me if you have a small PP. Unlucky, dude. Something I'm noticing is he's not setting up hot swaps as much. Um, haven't seen him do that that much in general. Oh, maybe he just thinks. Maybe he just makes a mental note of where they are. Or he's just that confident that he'll make it anyway, so it doesn't matter. And he got the twenty. And then the last one again on streamer building. Keep in mind what we said. He picks up the car. He knows that thing is busted. He knows he has to abuse it. I mean, I would as well, and I have because it's great. It's a little bit awkward at times. Got some zipline jumping. The thing is also, I am not a master of zipline jumping. So as me, you know, as someone who analyzes someone else's gameplay, it's hard for me to say, oh, he does this. Oh, he does that. The zip goon gam gabadoo jump there. Like, I, I don't know. He's zipline. He, he loves to. One thing I have pointed out in the past is he likes to do super jumps. Every time he enters a zipline, it is a super jump. Um... Probably because it makes it harder to shoot him if someone's looking at him right when he gets on it. He does that little bounce. That is a super jump, but then he turns around. It's very simple to do. It looks flashy as hell. It's pretty simple to do compared to some of his blind jumps. Not to... Obviously not to reduce from his skill or anything. Oh! 
And he's very fast the way he does it as well. Yeah, legit, you, you super jump, and then you turn around midair, and then you super jump again. I, I guess it's not called a super jump, but you like, as you latch on, you let go, and you kind of bounce off the zipline. With how much of his life Aceu has spent jumping these ziplines, you would imagine he has a good grasp on how to <laughs> use them. Constantly limiting, like, again, it's just, that's where the zipline buildings are so good, just constantly switching up, not committing. Just poking a little bit, he shoots him a little bit, he leaves. Shoots the next person a little bit, he leaves. As soon as they start turning back to him, if they don't look at him, he keeps shooting. It's uh, it's a pretty good strategy. You know, I, I see comments like that all the time on a lot of content creators' videos. They're like, oh, they're not shooting back, it's bot lobbies. And yeah, in some cases, yeah, there are bot lobbies. But very often, it's the, the, the streamer just plays in a way where they force the enemies to look the other way. Or rather, they, they have that good of a timing that they only peek when enemies look away. I don't know what happened here, but suddenly they're outside of zone and he's just chasing people in bubble. All right, go for it. Perfect for Bardi for you right there. Oh, it's rough. It's rough. It's a rough one. Can't see anything. Flashbang. Really feeling the counter strike. There you go. You're good. So yeah, I mentioned it before, like, I think it was like uh, two games ago, like in the first game I mentioned it, I just want to bring more attention to that. As we know, ACU has competed, right? He's played in higher level lobbies, he's played ranked. And I want to say, it, oh god, he's getting close. Um, I want to say that you can really tell that's happening, right? You can really tell, or you can really tell that the decision making, sorry, is happening. He's really trying uh to think about the zone especially when he is up against a full team that really wants to try really hard like to them winning is very important as a full free stack you know they, they've been they've been going at it the whole they haven't gotten a win down yet they're playing positioning they're looting up and they're not gonna make a simple mistake and he knows if i want to counter that uh I, that means that i need to play positioning and not only play positioning, he knows he has to play it better than they do. And obviously, they don't know how to play it to its fullest potential. So what he does is he knows, oh yeah, Stone's gonna pull here in late game, I'm just gonna go here. And that's sort of what he did here to a certain degree. Not as much as in, in the first game, but I did wanna mention it again. Just throw a little call back in there, like I just stole his kill. Why you take my kill? Yeah, I agree. And I think I want to say, like, even though he does some flashy things, in general, everything he does is more or less uh, efficient, right? Almost everything he does is, again, he's grinded out to a T. He doesn't do unnecessary movements. He, he tries to go from point A to point B, not spending too much effort and energy on style points. You know, the, putting a lot of stuff on style points is a lot of risk for things to go wrong. And you just, you don't want that. You don't want things to go wrong. Good wall hop. You had to do that there. Had to do that as well. See? Oh boy! Come on, you get him! One, one shot, one shot, you got it. Oh, he's actually- there you go! <laughs> Alright, so let's- Now it's a last squad. I'm sure the same thing will happen here. Let's point this out. This is the final squad. I want you guys to pay close attention. This is gonna be the final thing I'm mentioning. I want you to play, uh, pay close attention to the way ACU approaches this fight, this game. And I'm saying this without having actually watched this game. I'm not watched this video, this game. And let's just take a look. So as I mentioned, I've built this up a lot. And really, I keep trying to drill it in. He wants the enemies to make a mistake, right? He really does. So he wants enemy, we didn't get to see how that happened, I think the life enemies got caught off guard, but he wants to force the enemy to make a mistake. So not only does he want them to make a mistake, but he wants to be there when they do it, and he wants to be prepared to uh, punish that. So what he does is he usually positions himself in a way, look at this, he knows they have to come, they're gonna come, so he uh, positions himself where he has a good cover, um, he knows they're gonna push him, so he holds that cover and just peeks them, Presumably when they're gonna be out in the open, they could also not have been out in the open, he wouldn't have known that. But then nothing would have happened. But he's always, uh, you know, like someone, someone says, someone could say, oh, it's a lucky peak. Uh, when preparation, uh, preparation meets opportunity, that's what we call luck. So he, he's prepared, there's opportunity, now it's luck. In this case, he, I think he can probably feel that they're kind of 
Pepega. Like, they're not really... They're just running away. They're not shooting back. He feels he has a lot of space here. So maybe this wasn't the perfect uh, <laughs> video or moment to illustrate the point. But I'm sure we'll still see a little bit of that. And either way, that's also a good lesson there. If your enemies don't deal a lot of damage, they don't seem to know what they're doing. They don't seem to apply that much pressure. You should also abuse that. And now he knows she's going to climb, so he's just waiting. And then hits a fatty. He's going to go for the trick shot, I assume. Oh, oh, oh. That works. <laughs> Anyways, that was a lot of things that I learned from watching ASU. I hope you guys learned something too. If you enjoyed the video, check out ASU. I, I don't think he needs the subscribers, but it is his content. I'm just talking over it. I don't really add any value, I guess. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.